Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Master Sergeant Dave Salinitri, and welcome to another episode of Generation Space. We're coming to you out of uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is home to uh, where our space training is conducted. So sitting next to me are two current students, uh, two young rock stars as described by their leadership. And uh, yeah, why don't, uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? That's uh, I'm Aaron First Class Jeremy Block. Uh, I'm from actually close, close around here, San Francisco. Nice. Uh, I'm with uh, EUST 19013. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, becoming a part of things in the near future. So uh, EUST, essentially enlisted space operating yeah. training. Yes, sir, exactly. There we go. There yes, we sir. go. Oh, yeah, I'm a simple man. Let's keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Lieutenant Haley Slack. I am from Colorado Springs, Colorado. So going to be going home here pretty soon um, with nice. all the space world. And I am a part of Officer Undergraduate Space Training 1910. Nice, cool. Well, thank you both for taking a little time out of your uh, your day to talk to, uh, talk to us here. And what a cool classroom we're in right now. Uh, I mean, this is uh, if you can't really see it in the camera, uh, this is like a museum <laughs> slash classroom. <laughs> it is so cool. I really like it. I wish our classrooms, you know, in our tech school was like this. But this, there's some history here. It's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. It kind of reminds me of like it kind of sums up like the space game right now. It's cool again. You know, it wasn't like, you know, when our, our parents, or at least my parents, you know, when, when uh think about the space day, uh, like the, our, um, you know, when they were kids, you know, what the space was like back then, you know, that's when we we're going to the move, moon, we we're putting people on the moon. Um, and that kind of became almost like not exciting for a while. And now I feel like space is becoming like cool again. John Raymond says it best, and that's uh, we're the, we're uh, we used to be last picked, the last kid picked in uh, kickball. You know, now we're now we're, now we're the first kid. You know, um, now tell me, like, kind of playing off of that, did you two want to go into space, or like, was this the last thing on your list, or was it uh, something you never saw coming, or what? It was it was my first choice. I um, knew I wanted to be an engineer when I was in like the ninth grade. And then uh, I just fell in love with space as I went through physics and um, all my other science classes. Um, just the uncertainty of it, honestly, is just always really um, interests me. Nice, nice. How about you? Uh, yeah, same here. Uh, basically, ever since I was a little kid, I've always believed that the pursuit of, the, I mean, the next chapter in the human story, space, is one of the greatest pursuits I could put myself towards. And so I'm really humbled and honored to be part of it. And it's I, I'm attracted to being a technician, but at the same time, you have to have a certain spirit of adventure because this is the next the next frontier, and I'm really excited to be part of you know pushing that pushing those boundaries in what way that I can. It seems like uh, one of the cool things about like the space career field uh, is you actually get to exercise a little bit of creativity. That uh, you go to work, you really don't know like, what, what's ahead today. I'm not you know you're not pushing paperwork, you know, or uh, doing the same thing every day. It seems like uh, I don't know is that what you've been learning? I, like you know what, what have you been learning? What, what what about the curriculum that you've gone through? And talked uh, a little bit about how long you've been going through this. Um, get you to the excited the most. So I've been here about uh, three months. I've got three weeks left um, before I graduate and then head back and actually join, you know, start learning about my mission specifically. But the most exciting thing is when everybody talks about space, they say um, we're going to be doing things that have never been done before. And we have to be creative in the sense that, you know, we're going to have to do missions with um, things on orbit that haven't, we don't know what they're going to be able to do yet. Um, We can't put something in space like tomorrow, so we have to get creative with what we have on orbit right now. So that's really cool to me, because then you get to use you know, something that's been on orbit for 10 years and has had one mission, and now you get to change it, and that's cool. Like a professional problem solver of sorts. Professional problem solver, <laughs> Basically, yeah. Basically, sir. That's, that's, uh... It, uh, it, all, it really kind of harkens back, like you mentioned, when space was cool, as it were. Um, it was a time when there really was no rule rule book. There was no handbook of how to overcome certain situations. We were kind of feeling our way through the dark, sometimes literally. Um, and it required a certain, I mean, there's really not, it's hard to describe a word for it, but it, a, a creativity, absolutely. And, you know, and uh, it's almost like you, you get to sort of write the, not not to the rule book, but write the way you're going to go forward and write the story. And it's as we as we push ahead, and it's really really exciting to be part of that. And I remember we we got a chance to go out to the museum here on Vandenberg, and uh, this gentleman who um, was uh, I guess he'd been part of it before. He told us stories about how you know back in those days they didn't quite know what they were doing yet, and so they all had to figure it out as they went, <laughs> and it could cause all manner of problems. But the best thing about those problems is that they would then 
create these massive solutions mm. that would propel things so far forward. So really in this in this field, in space in general, it's an eye-opening experience to be able to be part of creating that new that new rule book, that new way of doing things and applying it towards moving us ahead. Yeah, it's exciting times. It's just like, you know, I, mean, I even think about the fact that whenever uh, like I go out and talk to my friends, like civilian friends downtown or, you know, just random people, um, they all know what's going on in space right now. And I think like five, 10 years ago, people are like, oh, there's Air Force in space? <laughs> what? You guys fly jets. Like, what are, you, what are you guys doing flying satellites? That's a little, you know, and it seems like that's like really like kind of sums up the change in narr the narrative. You know, we're called Generation Space for a reason. It's like there's this movement going on where space is fun like even like more or less you know even like our top air force leaders our top dod leaders our top na national leaders they're talking about space and how exciting it is and these commercial partnerships and it's just exciting times you know so uh yeah, really. yeah. now something that i heard that was kind of interesting about you airman block is that um you have we have a second lieutenant here a master sergeant and we're both the least uh we are not the most educated person <laughs> in this room right now um I mean, I have a fancy piece of paper, sir. That's really all I can tell you. A couple of fancy pieces <laughs> a, of paper. A few. Um, yeah, I'm. Um, yes, sir. I uh, I do have I do have a, I did get a master's degree um, from the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands. Um, I wanted to basically. I've always been interested in going into the space field, and I've been trying, you know, looking at avenues. And when I got my education, I thought, okay, this can be a way to do that. But then when I um, I kind of looked at it, I thought. There's another great passion that we, I'm sure we all share in the, more in uniform, is that we want to serve our community and do more than just well, what is already one of the ultimate pursuits. We want to add something to that. Right. And so for me, that's really what it came down to. Um, so I came back and decided, yeah, let's let's enlist. Let's see what the side of the house looks like and then see where it, see where it takes me. Um, uh -huh. Well, well it's, it's cool because, I mean, like, you know, uh, being young, having a bachelor's and a master's, uh, you know, you had you had options. You had you probably had a lot of options and to uh, enlist and to go space. Like, I mean, you could have worked for probably like, you know, different contractors and all that stuff. Um, but this is this is where you are. Yes, sir. I mean, again, like I mentioned, there's I don't think there's any higher calling than serving your community. Um, I mean, yeah, the GI Bill is nice. I'll, my, my kids, I'm sure, will enjoy it. Um, <laughs> like the finances are good, but I mean, like, you meant, but what what really matters most, to, again, to all of us, you know, we. I mean, I'm sure Lieutenant Year is also. You got, she went to an amazing university as well. Like we could, we could have done a lot, but I think we all made the conscious decision to do it for not just ourselves, but for everyone around us that helped make us who we were. And I mean, our allies around and just. Doing something more than just for ourselves is what it comes down to. No, that that's awesome. Well put. And like, so yeah, kind of like uh, Aaron Block was explaining. So like, I mean, you went to what was it? Um, we went to the University of Michigan. There we go. There we go. And we do have an Ohio State guy in the room who's uh, <laughs> rolling his eyes right now. Um, but um, I mean, so you know, back in the day, and not uh, you join folks joined the Air Force to they want to fly, they want to be part air crew, and it's like almost to the point where you know if you're not air crew, you know. Are you really part of the Air Force? <laughs> but now it's like to, it's to, to the point where like uh, I saw in the classroom the other day where uh, General Dick uh, Davidson asked, "Hey, for all you going through school right now, who is in this room because they want to be? Uh, who want who want to be a space?" And majority of the people raising their hands, um, "You want to come into the Air Force to do space? Like, what what drew you to wanting to do space versus you know flying F 22s or you know C 17s or?" whatever it may be, you know, finance, whatever. Uh, so space just honestly, um, I loved the mission set that was there. Um, so uh, looking out and knowing, you know, that there's something bigger than yourself and um, being able to, to kind of defend against the unknown. We don't know what's coming in space and that's like a really interesting problem set there. You said creative problem solving, and that's that's kind of really what drew me to space is that it's just I just don't know, you know, so much about what we can do, and I want to be able to go in and know and honestly get in on that ground floor when we are developing capabilities to do some really cool things. What has been the coolest part um, about this training so far? The highlight, the the moment where you're like, I'm in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we uh, got to do some rocket launches, actually, <laughs> as a part of our okay. curriculum to like, so we, we went through and we were um, just learning how rocket launches happen. 
Um, and so we actually launched the rock, the rocket on the right. Wow. Um, okay. Uh, my class did, and that was just a really fun thing. And it was kind of like a um, very you understood what your mission was in that moment, mm -hmm. and that was really cool um, to to know like that the mission that you're doing matters, and and being able to see that you know visually and be a part of it. And I'm you know I don't you know. I was told never to ask a woman this. How old are you, ma'am? I'm um, 23, sir. <laughs> so to be a 23-year-old and to have, like, the responsibility of throwing a rocket off the earth, uh, multi-million dollars, um, sometimes I stop and think about, like, all the responsibility we have at such a young age, and that's one of the cool things about the Air Force is, you know, the having that. Um, do, do you ever think about that a little bit, like being, you know, our, you know, your age and being able to <laughs> be, you know, you're going to be part, you're going to be flying satellites, multi-million, things that <laughs> all of us around the world, you know, rely on that. And then you think about like some of our, peer, you know, your peers who, um, you know, graduated college and maybe that, you know, they're, they're in the pr private sector doing something, you know, still cool, but you know, we're not throwing rockets off the earth. Yeah. Um, it's an honor, honestly, just to be able to be here and say that that's what I do. Um, not really. You're gonna be doing the same thing. I mean, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, yeah I mean, again, as as, uh, as she said, yeah, it's it's an absolute humbling honor to know that when we look up, you know, we get to know that we're a part of what's above us. That I mean, as you said, sir, everyone relies on, um, and just in general, yeah, it's 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 a it's a very it's a very interesting feeling uh -huh. to know that we get to play some sort of role in. Yeah, sh shaping that create creative problem solving and and be part of this next gener this generation space that's forming. <laughs> um, it's cool to be to be on the ground floor of that. What's been um so how about you? Uh, what's been your highlight so far of this of this? Of your um, for me, it's been being surrounded by individuals who, when I ask them if you could take a one way trip to Mars and you wouldn't necessarily come back, would you do it? And the answer is almost universally yes. And up until this point in my life, I've asked people this question and they've almost always said no. And it's unknown, it's worrisome, like I want to be able to come back, you know, all this stuff. Um, but I'm now surrounded by people who have that passion to push the boundaries and to create this amazing new thing. And I'm sure like your answer would be, yeah, absolutely. there you go. Like so, <laughs> I mean, this, it's, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing group of people to be around and I'm really, really honored to be with them. And it's, I've never felt like I belong somewhere in the right place more than I ever have than I do here. Well, that's awesome, but at the same time, y'all are crazy. <laughs> I, 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 saw, I, I saw that movie with Chris Pratt and what's her name, Jennifer Lawrence, on their way to uh, you know some galaxy far, far away, and I know what happened in that movie. So, no, that's awesome. It seems like you know, it's, nothing's better than be able to wake up and enjoy going to work or going to the classroom and enjoy what you're doing, the people you're with. That's awesome. So what are you looking forward to most about going to uh, – Buc so you're going to the 460th, Buc yes. Buckley, and you're going Buckley. to the 50th at yes, Trevor. What, uh, what are you – what you know? What are you most excited about? About uh, you know, get, getting there and doing the mission. I just want to learn everything I can about it. Space has just always been so intriguing to me. I just want to absorb as much as I can. Yeah. Honestly. That's what what you know. If uh, if you could ask you know, first Lieutenant Slack, you know, two year year and a half, two years from now, <laughs> who's been in the space game for a little bit, you know, what what, what would be something you you'd ask her? Um. Probably just what, honestly, what was the most surprising thing? And like, because mm. I don't know, I, honestly. Yeah. How about, would you ask a senior airman block? Um, I would probably ask him, how did MQT go? Uh, how much, how much have you learned at this point? Uh -huh. um, how much have you slotted into the team? How much, like, what are you giving back? Um, what, in what ways? are you valuable and what KPIs have you met uh, and what KPIs are you going to meet in the future and how are you going to keep that momentum going? Um, and that's uh, what you've been up to. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some progress. Like so how's life? Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are the lot of numbers? But no, um, but no basically, yeah, like, what, what, what's the momentum? What, and how are you going to continue to contribute, continue to be part of this mission and continue to do more for, for yourself and for everyone around you? Yeah. 
That's a, that's a good one. There, co- copy, copy, paste. <laughs> <laughs> He's good. He's good. Yeah, man. I try to think of where I was with the A1C, and I'm like, I like cheeseburgers. You know? I mean, there's that too. So don't get me wrong. I still got a lot of, you know, this is. <laughs> no, but it's part of like you, you both. You're you're part of Generation Space. Like that's something that uh, one of uh, General Raymond's CAG directors or his CAG director, uh, Colonel Manor, uh, something that he talked about a lot is uh, Generation Space and how. Um, you know, uh, every, so many folks are about part of it. You have your instructor, Mr. Mr. Buck, Mr. Bucky. Mr. Uh, Bucky, yeah. Yeah, whose classroom <laughs> we're in today. Thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> and you have uh, who's paved the way, and he's kind of paying it forward, and uh, the excite, he's carrying excitement. And then you have you guys, the, like the younger, you know, the, the recipients of his knowledge. But then I think about, like, the people who are in, like, seventh, eighth grade right now, or um, basic, not even basic training, but, you know, they might be going to basic training in a couple of years right now. Um, you know, what would be, you know, I think about them, what would you, what would you tell them right now if they're, if they're considering, you know, um, you know, what, what, does, what do I want to go to college? Do I, if I do, what do I do? Go, where, where do I go from, from there? Is space a thing? Do I want to do this and that? You know, what, what would you say to them? Well, you know. Uh, go down. Uh, just, just be hungry. Go for it. Go find what you're passionate about. In because like, space for me was my what I was passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're passionate about space, just go for it. It's so exciting. There are so many different things you can learn about. You could do space weather. You can do um, just satellites, rocket launches. Mm. There's so many opportunities in space right now, and it is really um, really cool. For lack of a better term. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, first and foremost uh, for the enlisted for the enlisted folks, um, BMT is not that hard. Like just a couple weeks, and then you'll get used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And then once you get through that, um, you know, I mean, if if you if you really want to get involved in space, I guess what it comes down to is um, have that have that adventurous spirit. I mean, look at a big. Be, I mean, it kind of sounds naive almost, but be a dreamer, because this is a situation where we need dreamers. We need people who look at things and don't understand why it would be impossible and make it happen. Uh, because we are in a place where we don't yet understand what is not possible, which is one of the most fascinating things about space. We don't, we understand it, we understand the physics, but we don't understand what cannot be done. And that creates a massive amount of potential that if you want to get involved in space, particularly for the government and doing it for your community, right you're on the right path. You, I want to meet you because that's amazing. <laughs> you're someone who I want to ask if you want to go to Mars and I want to hear your answer. That's so cool. You know, it's, uh, you know, I think General Davidson, I heard him say it the other day is, uh, you know, don't be afraid to fail. And he said, uh, in order to know your potential and your, uh, cap- your ability, you have to push your parameters to the point of failure because then you know, okay, I can go right up to here. But if you're playing it safe and you're going to only go up to here, you're not going to realize you have all this other space right up here to, to, to achieve greatness. Um, and I, I just think that's awesome to, you know, to not enjoy failure, but not to be afraid of it. And I think that ties into with, with being a dreamer and um, not really uh, caring about, you know, how high people <laughs> tell you can you tell you you can go, you know, you're going to go as high as you want to go. I mean, the sky's the limit, sir, and in our career field, that's not applicable. The sky's so. not the limit, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, so, the, yep. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's true. Like, um, don't tell me the sky's the limit when yep. there's footprints on the moon. Exactly. Like. Nice. Yeah, we, we, we don't, we, yeah, the sky is not our ceiling anymore. So this is absolutely place you can go. If you can go further, I'd buy that T-shirt. Sky's not the limit when there's. Food. Don't tell me the sky's That's the limit. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw it online somewhere. I don't remember where, but yeah, nice. that was one of my favorite sayings when I was coming up through high school. It's because, you know, you're looking at things and people are telling you, "Oh, you can't do that," and you're like, "We can." Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, what's the phrase? Hold my, hold my beer. Watch this. Don't tell me I can't. <laughs> don't tell me I can't do that. <laughs> um, what, what? You know, we're gonna wrap up in a little bit. I'm, I'm curious. What were your first like kind of? Uh, memories or thoughts on space like well I know for me I remember being uh, a kid in the, my driveway with my mom um, with my grandfather's telescope and he was you know he used to go to Cape Canaveral to do some stuff back in the 50s and 60s um, so it's kind of I remember that being that little like six-year-old and you know getting you know getting up on the little uh, you know trying to like get on my tippy toes <laughs> to try to see through um, and uh, you know look at look in the stars um, I remember that uh, to this day what were your first memories of space and so uh, very similar is uh, we had a pop-up camper mm-hmm. and we would push it all the way down and then lay on top of the camper and just look up and then you've got, you know, just like 
when when we were sitting outside stargazing and the satellites would fly by mm -hmm. and you think they're shooting stars and then you learn that they're not shooting stars they're satellites mm -hmm. and what does that satellite actually do and that was those are my like first memories of those and like just being curious of like it's going so fast and how is it still working <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah how's it still alive how's it still a thing yeah um, for me, for the for the folks from the Bay Area, it's uh, the Exploratorium, mm -hmm. uh, which is this amazing museum all about everything to do with the questions that we ask about everything, and one of them was space. Um, and I was always drawn to that particular spot because I've always been super curious about everything, um, and I'm kind of a lifelong learner. And one of the biggest unknowns that we have is out there. And so my, my first experience was wanting to know. And so I wanted to learn more and wanted to keep going back. And plus it was just really cool. I mean, sending people up at to escape Earth's velocity, you know, like taking <laughs> thousands of miles an hour up into, I mean, it's just, it was, I mean, the, the, the little kid in me loved the big rockets and the explosions. And as, and as I grew up, it became more into like, this really is where we're going. I mean, we're destined to go out there. So this is kind of a cosmic perspective here that we need to start stepping into. Sort of become a lot tangible for you. Almost. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. So we're we're kind of wrapping up. So let, let me ask you this: Is is there anything um we I haven't asked or anything that um we haven't talked about that you want to mention or something we have talked about that you just maybe want to like foot stomp one more time? Be a creative problem solver. We need and if you're a creative problem solver, we need you in space because we're gonna run into some problems that we've never encountered before, and those will be. That'll be the test. That'll be really interesting to see where it goes. Okay, great. Absolutely, yeah. And like dreamers and explorers wanted, you know, adventurers wanted. Like we need folks who, yeah, can can problem solve, who aren't afraid of the unknown, who, you know, who want to tackle things that we really don't have a rule book for yet, and who want to be part of bringing us into that next chapter, huh. and bringing us out there. So. Fair. You know, let me ask uh, actually another question too. Is um, so there, you know, let's say you both were going to Shriver, or let's say maybe like five years from now, you both end up in the same unit, and uh, you know, or maybe f let's say four years, you know, we got uh, Captain Slack and Staff Sergeant Block, Tech Sergeant Block. You know, um, <laughs> um, what what's something? What's what would so what would be something you would ask of uh, you know, one of your enlisted tacticians, your airmen? What would be something you would um, I'd like to hear you kind of ask something of uh, you know, uh, one of your future leaders. Um, what would that be? So it's been said uh, many times right now, but it, it's ask why. Know, know your stuff and ask why. Um, because if we're doing something that's not maybe like the most efficient, but it's just the way we've done it before, that's not the right answer. Ask why, and then maybe we figure things out and we make things better. So she if she tells you to do something, ask why. That's what <laughs> yes. I heard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Within reason, within reason. <laughs> Understood. Well, why do I have to take that trash out, darn it? <laughs> um, um, if there's something that I could ask, I mean, if I was going to ask you, ma'am, um, in future, uh, it would be in what ways can we better become cohesive under what you need us to do? Um, because you're going to be managing, you have a lot in your mind already. Uh, and so you've got a big, broad picture. So in what ways, with our depth of knowledge, can we come together under this plan that you've been given to better accomplish the mission that you need us to do? Um, and of course, yeah, we'd love to be in the loop. So if we're asking <laughs> why, it's wonderful. Um, but at the same time, and yeah, in what ways can we come together as a team uh, to accomplish what you've been given to do? Great, awesome. Two good, uh, good things to chew on for a little bit. Um, so this is the last question. This is something I've been ending all my interviews with here. Uh, I've been doing this for about seven years, asking this question. Uh, I'll start uh, start off with you. Give you a minute to think about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this could be random, right? It's gonna be random. So sure. buckle up. Um, what do you live your life by? Um, I live my life by always trying to be better the next day, the tomorrow than I am today, and to ensure that in doing so, I made someone else better than they were too. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have been made a student leader here, which means that I am able to work with people and try to make them better while bettering myself. It's going to be a dual process for me, which I live for. And so, yeah, self-improvement via improvement of others. That's great. I felt like, you know, like... I don't know. Did that question get leaked? Because like you didn't, you didn't, you didn't pause for a half a no, second. Sir, they didn't tell me much about what I was getting into <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, I'm like, holy cow! You had that one just locked and loaded. <laughs> you, you should give the lieutenant another minute to think about it. Well, no, sorry, so. I also enjoy those cheeseburgers. You know, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got the king of burgers down the street. Let's go. <laughs> How about you, LT? Um, 
honestly, um, every day I just want to come home and be proud of who I see in the mirror. Um, and t to me, that means, you know, acting with integrity, um, being the best person that I can be, um, looking out for, you know, my people, my friends, anybody who needs me. Um, so just honestly being the best person I can be, and that to me is when I get home and I look at myself in the mirror, I want to be proud of my words, I want to be proud of my actions, um, and the way I do that is just looking out for every, for other people. Right, right. Awesome. Two great answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I want to thank you both for taking a couple of minutes out of your day to uh, speak with us and to uh, for Mr. Bucky for giving us his classroom. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, sitting down and talk to us, give a little insight to what it's like to be, you know, going through this program and to kind of, uh, you know, what got you here. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank it was a lot of fun. Thanks. Thanks. Well, uh, that's it for this uh, episode of Generation Space. Um, I don't know about you, but I am way more. Um, I am definitely confident going forward, knowing we got two uh, two minds like this uh, operating our space system. So, that's it for this episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, thanks.